I'm so glad that you all are here this morning. I'm, I'm uh, always excited to deliver whatever message um, I'm going to deliver, but <clears throat> I'm really excited this morning. I, I, there's, you know, in the news, um, there's a lot in the news, right? There's a lot in the news right now. And we have a lot of empty seats. Is that a coincidence? Um, there's a global health crisis, right? There's a, people are concerned. People are concerned. And, and now it feels a little closer to home, that concern. And I would suggest that every day um, there's something that rocks us. Every day there's something that can rock us off of our center when we're, where we're really feeling uh, connected and aligned something can happen. And it may be in the news and it may not. It may be in our personal lives. But what I would suggest is fear of any kind is um, the biggest virus that we can experience. Yeah. And um, so whether it is concerns about our health or concerns about our economy or concerns about our politics or war with other countries, with other religions, with other people, whatever, whatever it is, um, you know, how, how do we, quote, quarantine ourselves? Mm -hmm. How do we become immune to, to those things out there that seem to knock us off a of center? And I would suggest it's showing up. It's showing up. That's why I started with, I'm so glad you're here this morning, because you showed up. We show up, and we show up in our spiritual practice. That's what I believe the, the real answer is. And so that this morning, we're really going to look at that, because here's, here's what I believe the truth is. It's all God. Whatever we want to call it, it, meaning God, spirit, energy, light, source, it's all, everywhere, it's everything, all the time, no exceptions, no exceptions to that. And I believe it is done unto us as we believe. So this idea, do we hold of oneness or do we hold an idea of separation? Love or fear, peace or Chaos, confusion, turmoil. We have choices. We always, always are at a point of choice. We always have choice. So this, this confusion over here, this chaos and confusion, I know all too well right now. Um, I, I, it, it, it appears that I have a depressed immune system. Well, uh, there's a health crisis, you know? I mean, what am I? What, I have choices, right? I have choices. Um, to walk around with a mask on, I have a choice to stay home, I have a choice to wash my hands all the time, and I am washing my hands. I'm also doing my spiritual practice. And I'm not doing any of those things from a place of fear, which is, I think, key for us. I, I just really think that that's key, no matter what it is that we're talking about. So, you know, what am I doing? Okay, so I'm taking my vitamins, I am washing my hands, I'm, I'm, I'm walking daily, I just, you know, I'm trying to, 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 to exercise and eat right and, and seek alternative solutions. But the spiritual practice piece of it is the really mainstay. It's the big piece of it. Right, Carlton? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so these first Sundays are really important to me. These first Sundays each month, like I said, we slow it down, um, more contemplative, because if you do not have a spiritual practice of meditation and daily prayer, I, I want to use these to really encourage that, to really encourage um, creating a, 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 pr a daily practice, a system in your home where you, 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 this is what you do, and this is where you go to be centered. Um, and it's good science. This month's um, magazine, there's always an article in the back of the Science Mind magazine by um, Mark Waldman and Dr. Andrew Newberg, who are, um, you know, the neuroscience researchers. And so this month, this, the March issue, 
Um, they're talking about their brain scan research. And they're saying that prayer and meditation can literally change the way our brains perceive reality, allowing our thoughts to change our actions, behaviors, and relationships to others. And that is proven now that obsessing on negative fantasies, feelings, and beliefs, i.e. our fears, obsessing with the news, all of that, that it will interfere with us achieving our goals or living our dreams, or I would maybe add, you know, living a, just a decent life, a life of peace, a life of calm, a life of connectivity. So they go on to say, <clears throat> quoting Dr. Ernest Holmes, the most destructive force you and I have is our own unconscious emotional and thinking and feeling states. And they say that neuroscience agrees with that that negative emotions easily undermine our positive intentions and goals. And their advice is don't give in to it. Observe them without judgment, remaining in a relaxed meditative state. So allow those feelings to come up, allow the fear, we don't, we don't want to, um, uh, what's the word, stuff it, right? We don't want to stuff it. We allow it to come up, but we, res we non-judgmentally observe and let it be, let it pass. And they say in that meditative state, in that relaxed meditative state, we can ask ourselves three simple questions. How do those negative thoughts and feelings make me feel? Is there any value to them? And how do my negative emotions affect the people I engage with? We're going to have an opportunity this morning to go deep and to ask ourselves some questions, some pertinent questions from a, that relaxed meditative state. So they're talking about how Im the evidence really demonstrates that medi meditation, contemplative prayer, and positive help thinking help us function better, both internally and externally in the world. So it's not me just saying, <laughs> right? It's not me just saying. So. They're giving us sage advice here. When you practice kindness, compassion, and inner peacefulness, you'll lower neurological fear and self-doubt by building new neural circuits that help you succeed in creating positive, meaningful relationships wherever we are, whatever it is that we set out to do, to be, to enjoy, wherever we are, right? And so they're calling this a neurological law of attraction love that neurological law of attraction and in the rare moment of neurological oneness we can transcend our old beliefs to build a better world that's what we're here to do that's what we're here to do right and they say that that happens when science and religion make love Aww. I know I love that when science and religion make love so we're doing a little departure this morning from the the CSL themes you know, globally, we, we've got these themes that we're, where most centers are, are doing the same thing, talking about the same thing. I departed this month because I really want us to focus on the um, Association for Global New Thoughts Season for Nonviolence, which is the 64 days um, between the memorial anniversaries of Mahatma Gandhi and uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. And so we're almost right in the middle of it. And if you watch us, follow us on Facebook, we've, I've been posting most every day. I did, I did miss a few days um, when I was in Denver. But um, I'm posting their quotes from, from these gentlemen and, and others. And I feel like there's really nothing more important for us to do right now, for us to look at this month. So I, I made the decision to do that departure. Um, and, I, and I promised you that I would always do that if I felt called to. So, Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. shared a vision, right, and for, for achieving peace through nonviolent action. And so I want us to look at that in various ways all month long. Um, they believed, and I believe, that that is the ultimate in empowering the world to make change. And what Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see in the world, 
and the peace song that we sing at the end of the service every, every Sunday, you know, we know it begins with us. And still sometimes we get knocked off center. So I just want to remind you this morning that there's a place that we can go within ourselves to remember and recenter, right? So we're going to raise our consciousness this morning around that possibility of peace with ourselves and other people. I've got a quote from Ernest Holmes here that I think just so beautifully sums it up, and, um, and it is, is part of uh, what I had prepared for the youth this morning too. The peace that is within you is not something separate from God. The peace that is within you is not something separate from God. It is not something that bombards you from the outside. This peace is something that extends from within. Always this peace has been with you. Always this peace has nestled at the center of your being, ready to reveal its perfection and harmony. Peace stands at the door of your consciousness and awaits your acceptance of it. However, it does not stand outside your door waiting for entrance so much as it stands inside waiting to be expressed in everything that you do. I'm going to invite us now into, <clears throat> into the stillness, into meditation. So however your body feels most comfortable, feet on the floor, feet up, feet out. I do recommend straight back. I recommend that strong back, that part of us that says yes. I am here, I am now, I am open, I am available, I am meditating. And the part of us in the front that is soft, that yes says, I am open, I am present, and I am available. We allow ourselves to really sink into this moment and this space. I recognize for each one of us that this breath that courses in and out is the breath of the divine. It is right here, right now, within each one of us, literally breathing us. It is so close. Let us be present to it now. I invite you to place your focus, your attention on your breath as it enters your body, as it fills your lungs, Abdomen. Pausing. Feeling the fullness of the moment of each breath coming in before we allow it to release. Again, from the abdomen through the lungs and back out. you to take a conscious journey with your breath in and out. Allowing this divine presence to relax every aspect of our body, that mind that chatters, the shoulders that tense, jaw that clenches, allow it to release, to 
open to that divine presence right here, right now, breathing it in. Feeling this rhythm, allow it to take on a light. See it in your mind's eye, that rhythm, that flow, that process that truly is our very life. your body and back out. Continue to feel the rhythm, the harmony. brilliant true light your unique light that emanates from within you moving out into this room see the dance continuing to witness the harmony and the rhythm. We are not only filled with this peace, with this harmony, with this rhythm, but we are immersed in it. It is all around us. I watch as we open these doors and see this love and this flow and this peace spread from this very room blanketing this entire community of Sarasota. divine presence a 
Oh, see it open hearts, open minds. Feel its healing nature as it canvasses all of Florida, touching every school, every teacher, every governmental office, every hospital, every prison. Feel this peace. See this peace cover our entire United States. There's a beautiful, beautiful, endless flow. It is rhythmic and harmony. It flows through the doors of the White House. It touches everyone and everything everywhere. Allow it to move beyond the oceans. This love, this peace, this beauty, this harmony, this divine presence cannot be contained. Every country, every child, every mother, every father, every leader, every heart, every mind, filled with and immersed in peace, a beautiful harmony, a beautiful harmony, a beautiful vibration continues to raise our awareness up beyond this earth. We rise and we see our beautiful earth. Feel its love, its harmony, its presence. Pulsating with the divine and harmony. And it is here in this highest possible realm in the cosmos. in a place of curiosity, in a place of inquiry, asking your highest wisdom self, how do I block my experience of peace? Listen. How do I block my experience of peace? Why do I block my experience of peace? What do I need to release? What changes might I make to embody peace? How does peace wish to express by means of me? situations or what people can I bring more peace to? I invite each one of us to take this wisdom. Take this wisdom and welcome it. And 
making the journey back from that place in mind where we connect with all that is back into our bodies here in this room knowing that this harmony this rhythm this peace is available not only in this moment now but that each one of us carry it with us everywhere we go for the one expresses itself divinely uniquely inherently within everything that we say that we think that we dream everything we do claim this truth for each one of us. I claim this truth and I know that all the crooked places are now made straight. That there is a divine plan, a divine way, a method, a path for this harmony, for this love, for this peace, for this joy of living this life at this time. be shared, to be given, to be gifted in a way that only uniquely each one of us can do. The path is made clear. And for this, I am so grateful as we witness already in the mind of God the healing, the peace, the elimination of conflict and chaos and a world that truly does work for everyone and all things.